I'm Paul Goldberger, architecture critic for The New Yorker. I'm sitting in Bryant Park in the middle of midtown Manhattan. You know, the city, New York in particular, is kind of an inherently sustainable green place because it's dense, more people use public transportation, and so New Yorkers have a lighter carbon footprint than almost anywhere in the country. It's sometimes hard to know what green architecture actually is and a lot of what makes a building green or sustainable has to do with things that are invisible. One of the greenest buildings in New York right now is the Empire State Building, which has just finished a complete redo from top to bottom to make it almost as green as a brand new building. I visited three different kinds of projects that show the cutting edge of where we are in New York with sustainability. A big midtown skyscraper to an apartment building to a small office interior. One Bryant Park, it's the most ambitious green office tower in the country so far. It has a lot of internal recycling, including its whole water system. It reuses wastewater. It uses ice or to supplement the air conditioning. We visited with Jody Durst and Alexander Durst from the Durst Organization. We probably consume 45 to 50 percent of the energy that uh, an older building of the same size would. This isn't just a, a demonstration board. This is actually real time what's happening in the building. We, we capture all the rainwater that falls within the footprint of the building, and we also capture the water that's used when people wash their hands, and we use that purified water to flush the toilets and also to pump to our condensing units on the roof. So during the night, um, that chiller plant produces ice to the ice farm, which is, is comprised of roughly 30 huge tanks that hold ice. And during the day, that ice is used to carry the base load in the building. Of cooling, that is. Of cooling. So in a way, it's kind of like going back in a very high-tech way to the old idea of like having a huge block of ice and as it melts, it cools you. That's right. So I know who to call when I need ice for a party. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most important things about sustainable architecture is that it doesn't only apply to new buildings. A lot of old buildings have been retrofitted, renovated, to make them much more sustainable. You know, Democracy Now! is a radio, television, and internet production studio in an old loft building in midtown Manhattan. I toured Democracy Now! with Karen Renucci, chairman of the board of the organization, and Dennis Darcy, who runs Brooklyn Interiors, the contractor who built it. This was an old print factory. Uh, so when we first walked in, the place was wide open. As many things that were here that we could incorporate into the design as opposed to something new is what we did. The floor is the original cement mm -hmm. floor. We used non-poisonous uh, polyurethane to coat it. It was to our surprise to find all these holes and scratched bricks, but uh, it actually gives it a wonderful feel. Yeah, it's a kind of patina almost. All of the wood is from sustainable sources or used. The kitchen counter and the bathroom counters, the makeup room, are all made from broken up bottles. Every stick of furniture in here except one is, got, is pre-owned. They, they look as though they've had a prior life. Yes, yeah. pre-loved pre as right. car pre dealers like right. to say. So the first principle we might say would be reuse of as much as possible. Resource and reuse, exactly. If you can dive in a dumpster and grab a chair, that's that's resourcing. You know, even the, the factory, the old factory windows, the 110-year-old factory windows that were in uh, this floor, we removed. We reused them as Clara stories to bring daylight deeper into the office spaces on the other side. I mean, one thing that really strikes me in this space is a lot of the sort of found objects here, the sink in the bathroom and that traffic light, are the kind of things that, that somebody else might pay a huge amount of money for as a novelty. I mean, I think you've actually done something that is quite beautiful, that you would want it to look this way whether or not you were getting green points for it. It was creative, it's artistic, yeah. uh, it takes, you know, 
takes a little more thought than just going to the store and, and right. paying your money. The Octagon is a rental apartment building at the northern end of Roosevelt Island. It's built around a wonderful octagonal tower that was once the core of the New York Lunatic Asylum. So we're walking into the original atrium. I took a tour of the Octagon with Bruce Becker, the architect who is also the building's developer. The footprint of these wings is where the old hospital wings were. Uh, the building uh, is like 90% efficient in terms of how many square feet are devoted to apartments versus circulation. Probably 90% uh, of the time, we are essentially grid independent. What makes this building distinctive is not only its historic landmark core, but uh, the fact that it has its own fuel cell. So how does the fuel cell actually work? So it's a battery that's continually recharged in effect. It's, it's always being fueled. We use hydrogen and oxygen, and the byproducts are electricity and water and heat. It's like th these 500 apartments have the same environmental footprint as two apartments in other Manhattan buildings. Fuel cells, in addition to creating electricity, they create thermal energy. And apartment buildings are one of the building types that uses thermal energy all year round for domestic hot water as well as for space heating. And your utility bills go down by about half. So why, why wouldn't everybody do this? Yeah, well, unlike architects, real estate bankers and investors typically don't want to do anything that hasn't been done at least four or five times before. Sure. So it's really right. hard to get the industry to adopt something like this. I mean, we'll put solar panels on it. We have actually the largest array of photovoltaic panels on a building in Manhattan at 50 kW. But that only produces about 3% of our whole electrical load for the building. So it's a little bit of a showpiece. But you do it almost more as a symbol, right? It's, it's more symbolic. So much of what is done isn't visible, and that is. Yeah.